Some people say that Steve Bannon was the man behind many of President Trump's policies, especially when it came to trade and foreign policy. So could his ouster affect the so-called Trump trade right now? Joining us now are Bonson and Johnson, David Bonson from My Towers Bonson Group and Chris Johnson from Johnson Research Group. Um, so I'll just begin with you. I mean, there's a couple of, of things to unpack here, but the Trump rally in a way has been long since passed and yet the markets lately have been at all-time highs. So especially looking at the reactions yesterday to the Cone news and today to the Bannon news, how do you expect uh, the stock market to respond? Well, I, I don't believe that we've had a Trump rally per se. I think that the market has been rallying on earnings. And I think that what we have this week is, first of all, the last two days, you have very low movements. So since the Bannon news, the 20, 30 points up and down is less than we'd have on a normal day in the last couple hours of trading. Right. Um, ultimately, though, what we've seen is that the market is frothy. There is not a huge catalyst. Earnings season is coming to an end. There's not a huge catalyst to go much higher at this point. However, I don't believe that what was pushing the markets higher earlier in the year was as much a Trumpian rally as we all kind of would like to talk about. Yeah. Chris, what do you think? And let me bring in the issue of foreign policy and trade, most especially trade agreements. You know, Steve Bannon was, as we all know, a big proponent of bilateral trade agreements, not multilateral agreements. Um, does that change now? Uh, I mean, what are you expecting to happen there? And, and what does that do to investments overseas, do you think? Well, let's back up first and talk about the rally. I, I have to believe, or I have to kind of agree somewhat with David there in that it wasn't necessarily a Trump rally. It was a certainty rally. What we saw in November was certainty. 18 months of going back and forth on who was going to be in charge was the problem. When that decision was made, that's why we saw the market rally. We've rallied on regulatory or hope that regulatory changes would come down the road. And the reason that this market's getting picked apart right now is one by one we're seeing those regulatory changes get knocked down. Now, moving on to the, the trade issue here, I do think that we'll see a little bit of change in the, the let's call it the landscape right now, Bill. I don't think it's going to be anything dramatic. What we need to see is synchronicity first between Congress and the White House. And okay. I think we'll find out where Bannon really stood, whether he was more of a, a mouthpiece or whether he was actually you know, somebody that was directing traffic, let's call it. Um, right now, though, I think that this quote unquote Trump trade or the certainty trade is at risk as there really needs to get that mesh between Congress and we need to get moving okay. forward on the regulatory changes that the market expected. I was hypnotized by that pen. What were you going to say? You know, the, the last few times the president has been overseas meeting with foreign leaders, he's sort of been isolated because of the views about bilateral trade as opposed to multilateral trade. You wonder if that's going to change now. You know, I think that there's a sense in which the worst protectionist nightmares that could have taken place after Trump came into office were all very muted. And that was with Bannon there. So now we're looking at what is the fear with Steve Bannon gone. I look to the China currency issue as indicative of what I expect out of this president. It was a lot of bark throughout the campaign. Steve Bannon really does believe that. And what did they do? They immediately capitulated with a lot of those more firebrand protectionists still there, Pete Navarro coming in and so forth. Ultimately, I think that there's more pragmatism now that will rule the day. I do think you're going to see the Gary Cones and these guys have a little bit greater of a voice, but I don't think that's what markets are responding to. We had 11 percent, 14 percent earnings growth the last two quarters. We have a market up 14 percent. That's a perfect so David, correlation. Let me ask you then if that's not the case. What happens yeah. if tax reform doesn't happen and what happens if it does? Well, and that's a great question because I do believe that if the full tax reform gets passed, we have more room to go because just mathematically better after tax earnings per share will be in place. And if it doesn't get done, I think you have some degree of sell-off, mostly because it would affect the multiple. So that's more in between there. But our other guest comments are right, that a lot of the regulatory issues have been helping to drive the market. Tax reform is the one major issue, but around the trade side, I just, you hear how much Trump brags about this stock market rally. I don't believe he wants to start a trade war with China. And, and that ultimately, together with these other pragmatic concerns, is good for market.